good evening friends we'll start today's session of organ we were discussing since last week topic of intermittent diseases as explained by animal right from aphorism number 231 he classified it in such a way that it becomes very easy to understand the approach of treating those diseases and that's why he first classified it exactly mentioned how to approach with each and every aspect so first two varieties the alternating diseases and the typical intermittent diseases which he has first explained the alternating diseases he explained over there is a type of chronic diseases where one state alternates with another state at a specific intervals and they are the product of either sora or sora with mixed with syphilis and accordingly in such types of cases the line of treatment remains to be either antisoric or either antisyphilitic or alternating either soria antisoric alternating with antisyphilitic and that's what he has explained while explaining the first variety of alternating diseases then second variety which he has <coughs> mentioned typical intermittent diseases and again typical intermittent diseases where one disease persists for a certain period and disappears and there is a state of health in between and again it recurs is the typical intermittent disease and typical intermittent diseases are further classified into two types the first variety which is called as non febrile variety of typical intermittent diseases and second is febrile intermittent diseases out of which the first he has mentioned about the typical non febrile variety and while explaining non febrile variety he explains over there in this in this cases uh, the typical uh, disease disease pattern remains to be there for certain period then there will be a period of again health and again it recurs and that non febrile variety is the product of again sora occasionally the sora gets complicated with syphilis and you require the treatment of antisoric remedies either or antisyphilitic remedies or sometimes antisoric alternating with antisyphilitic in such types of cases but the word of caution which he has mentioned over there the typical periodicity if it is there if you want to remove that periodicity a dose of potentized sinconabar should be given as an intercurrent to tackle the periodicity of that non febrile variety and that's what he has mentioned about this then he started explaining about the febrile variety of intermittent diseases and then which we labeled by the name of intermittent fevers intermittent fevers while explaining intermittent fevers he was again clear with his concept he has classified intermittent fevers into two types the first variety which he has mentioned is the epidemic and sporadic variety where the diseases are expressed in typical patterns there are many permutations and combinations as in allopathy they never considers all those things from their point of view there is only a one type of fever intermittent fever and that is called as an egg or malaria and the line of treatment was very fixed the when in derity but when we deal with the homeopathy this is not so and he has classified first it into epidemic and sporadic diseases and again they are further classified into the different permutations and combinations of the stages of states of the disease there are either two states alternating with each other the chill followed by heat chill followed by sweat heat followed by the sweat sometimes only chill on sometimes only sweat sometimes only heat or there might be three states alternating with each other chill followed by heat followed by sweats and there is again permutation and combinations of all these three things and accordingly from individual to individual according to the state we have to find it out choose a remedy for there so our remedy is not fixed by naming it it is typical intermittent fever but our remedy is based upon first state and second important thing which he has mentioned over there that in between period during the state of health between the two pair of disease whatever the symptoms presents those are specifically guide towards the in uh, to find it out a right remedy in such types of cases and he mentions over there such diseases should not be treated with antisoric remedies first but remedy should be a non antisoric related with that specific state and it should be given then when to give the medicine that also he has mentioned 
he mentions over there that the best period of giving this remedy in potentized form is the period of state of health after the paroxysm. As it starts beginning, immediately you give the dose so that there will be no aggravation of the complaints of the patient. And second important caution which I have mentioned, you should not give it in the early phase of chill during the intermittent fever. Otherwise, it can be a dangerous for the person. One more thing which he tried to explain over there, if the in-between interval between two paroxysms in complicated cases, if it is too less, then the per whenever the perspiration starts abating, that is the time you should provide the remedy so that it will work immediately without causing any damage to the person. After explaining this, he has mentioned one more caution. If it recurs again and again, you, after every stage you repeat the dose in by a plusing technique, and still, if it ne never settles, he explained that it, there might be two chances. First chance is the, pa the patient might be residing in endemic area or marshy districts. And when such a thing is there, you have to take that patient out of that situation, treat that him, and then he will be a healthy person who will not going to catch the disease again. Or second, if it is not because of the marshy district or if it is not endemic, it is definitely a product of Sora. So immediately after an acute remedy, a remedy which is based upon state, you have to follow it with the anti-soric remedy. And all those things which he tried to explain over there, and thereafter while explaining this, he explains that how to tackle the epidemics of such intermittent fever. And while explaining the treatment of epidemics, he explains that you, if you get many patients of the epidemics, find it out the totality of the case, each and every case, differentiate the totality, find the common totality of epidemic disorder, that specific epidemic, and find it out a remedy for that specific epidemic, which will be not a curative, but a preventive remedy for the rest of the persons who are remains in the state of health and who will not suffer as you introduce the mm, dose of that genus epidemicus to that patient. So this is what we have learned up till now, up, up to the aphorism number 241. This will be just a revision so that we'll never forget the treatment or homeopathic management of intermittent diseases. Let us go ahead with the 242, what he wants to explain. If, however, in such an epidemic intermittent fever, the first paroxysm have been left uncured, or if the patients have been weakened by improper allopathic treatment, then the inherent sora that exists, alas, in so many persons, although in latent state, becomes developed, takes on type of the intermittent fever, and to all appearances, continues to play the part of the epidemic intermittent fever, so that the medicine, which would have been useful in the first paroxysms, rarely an anti is now no longer suitable and can cannot be of any use. We have now to do with a soric intermittent fever only, and this will generally be subdued by minute and rarely repeated doses of sulfur or hepar sulfuris in high potency. So all permutations and combinations which he tried to explain. He has explained that if you are not able to find it out a right remedy or if you have find it out a right remedy and you have provided it to the patient suffering from the such a uh, epidemic variety of the intermittent fever and patient is after giving few more doses of that if it is not getting settled or if the patient comes to you after separation by the lot of allopathic medicines for that intermittent fever, in such cases, it is definitely because of Sora, which is in latent state in background. In such types of cases, the remedy which you are going to find it out on state will not going to work. It will not going to cure that patient. But what you require is the specific anti remedy. And if you want to treat such a sorry variety of epidemic intermittent fever, which is already suppressed with the allopathic treatment, you, you must give the sulfur, which he mentioned over there. So rarely repeated doses of sulfur means 
occasionally a dose of sulfur in order to tackle the sora in background. Or another remedy which he mentions over there is hepar sulfuris in high potency. So both the remedies, hepar sulfuris and sulfur, should not be given in low potencies over there. It should be given in high potency, but very occasional trepidation. It should be to tackle the sora in background so that there are, you can prevent the recurrence of such diseases in patient. And you can prevent the separation which is which has been caused because of the allopathic medicine. That also you can tackle with the help of those medicines, which has the depth to cure the sora in background. See, he was clear regarding all the concepts. So every approach was thorough in his mind. How to tackle epidemic variety? All approaches he has mentioned. First approach is to find it out right remedy on the basis of state. Second approach is that if it is because of the um, uh, marsh, if it recurs and patient is from the re residing in marshy endemic area, then you have to remove that patient from that area and treat with the same remedy. Third approach is that if patients recur it again and again, or if it is being suppressed because of because of allopathic medicine, it is definitely because of sora. You have to give the antisoric remedies, or and many a times sulfur in hypotensy or hepar sulfuris in hypotensy. And one more thing which he has mentioned, the fourth approach that in order to tackle the epidemic, the preventive remedy which is called by the name of genus epidemicus is another important remedy. To how to find it out that and how it can be used as a preventive remedy and not a curative remedy. That also he has mentioned. So, see the clarity in his thought. This clarity should be born in our mind. When we deal with the patient, our thought should run in such a manner. Our logic should be developed in such a manner so that it becomes very easy to handle the cases. We never get confused even if our approaches are very clear in our mind. Those who learn the organ and by heart definitely develops a logic, definitely develops the approaches and that becomes very simple to deal with the patient. We'll learn one more aphorism in today's session that is 243. What he says in 243? In those often very pernicious intermittent fevers, pernicious, nashkarak, very long stand. In those often very pernicious intermittent fevers, which attack a single person, not residing in a marshy district, we must also, at first, as in case of acute disease generally, which they resemble in respect to their sorry origin, employ for some days to render what service it may, a homeopathic remedy selected for the special case from the other class of crude, non antisoric medicine. But if notwithstanding this procedure, the recovery is deferred. Deferred means puda dakalne, lamniota. We know that we have to do with the sora on the point of its development. And that in this case, antisoric medicine alone, antisoric medicines alone can effect a radical cure. So if you get a case, where there is a long-standing intermittent fever. So it is a pernicious fever. Patient is suffering from intermittent fever since last three weeks, one month, and he is not settled with allopathic medicine. Many variety of medicines have been used, but still he is not getting settled. Then such cases never settles with the remedy which you have find it out on the basis of just a step. It will not going to work. They are definitely the product of sora. There is a separation in background. And you cannot treat that without anti remedy. So you have to tackle the sora. And what he says, here the remedy is definitely based upon the miasm, the sora, and it should be only and only anti remedy that will going to work. No remedy which is acute in action will produce a cure in such types of cases. So he was again very clear with his thoughts that if suppressed um, uh, 
there is a if there is a disorder pernicious disorder of the intermittent fever long standing case of the intermittent fever which is not getting settled with the proper uh, allopathic medicine and which is not at all recovering in such types of cases the remedy which is used on the state will not going to work here only anti sorry remedy will do a work and that remedy is based upon whole consideration of the human being and find it out a right remedy which covers the miasmatic aspect so <clears throat> both the aphorism where he tried to explain the complications of the intermittent fever and how to tackle with them and then thereafter he explains one more thing the endemic and marshy areas where the intermittent fever if it is persistent how to approach with them so aphorism number 244 the intermittent fever endemic in marshy districts and tracts of country frequently exposed to the inundations inundations manje pur ye na pralay hun give a great deal of work to physicians of old school and eight a healthy man may in his youth become habituated even to marshy districts and remain in good health provided he preserves a faultless regimen and his system is not lowered by one fatigue and pernicious passions now he explains that if it is a endemic area or a marshy district where intermittent fever is quite common but if the person is young who is having good health vigorous health who follows a proper healthy regimen who follows a proper diet and who has a typical per perfect strength who is not fatigued in such types of cases those they remains asymptomatic or they never suffers from the intermittent fever but the intermittent fevers are endemic there would act the most only attack him on his first arrival what is it when he first enters in that area definitely he will going to suffer from intermittent fever but one or two very small doses of highly potentized solution of a cinchona bar would conjointly with the well regulated mode of living just allude to speedily free him from the disease so if the patient who enters over there who generally get attacked with the intermittent fever the first and in such types of cases you give few doses of cinchona bar botanized cinchona bar and patient will be free of symptoms but persons who while taking sufficient corporeal exercise and pursuing pursuing mujhe pichha porone and pursuing a healthy system of intellectual occupations and bodily regimen cannot be cured of marshy intermittent fevers by one or few such small doses of cinchona in such persons sora striving to develop itself always lies at the root of their malady and their intermittent fever cannot be cured in the marshy district without anti sori treat what he has mentioned but the persons who while taking the sufficient corporeal exertions the person who is working very hard who is fatigued who is doing very hard hard work who is industrious enough and at the same time exhausted and if he suffers from the intermittent fever specifically when he works in marshy area then he says such type of cinchona action you will not going to get over there they are the products of sora the sora is behind and unless and until you treat that sora the patient will not going to cure so such persons who resides in the areas the, and who are fatigued and suffered from the intermittent fever the patient requires specifically the anti soric remedy in order to tackle the sora in the background it sometimes happens that when these patients exchange without delay the marshy district for one that is dry and mountainous recovery apparently recovery apparently ensues the fever leaves them if they be not a deeply sunk in disease that is to say if the sora was not completely developed in them 
can consequently return to its latent state, but they will never, but they will never regain perfect health without antisori treatment. So, if such patient who was residing in marshy area suffered from intermittent fever, and he has taken zincona, etc., and he leaves that place, he again goes to the dry area, mountainous area. At that time, his he, he will be free of symptom. But Hanneman says it doesn't mean that he has cured. Because he, he is happy because he was not in that specific area. If he goes there again, he will going to suffer again from the intermittent fever or attack of intermittent fever. So in order to save him, what he required is the proper antisoric remedy to that patient. So Whenever the person suffering from the intermittent fever, specifically in endemic area or a marshy area, generally they never yield to the synchona. They will require the antisoric treatment and you have to take that patient out of that area for a certain period, treat him properly with the antisoric remedy and then pay, patient gets immune against them and then thereafter he will not suffer again from the same type of disease even he goes in marshy area. One footnote which he mentions regarding it is very important to this. Uh, footnote number 131. Large, often repeated doses of synchona bar as also concentrated synchonic remedies such as the sulfate of quinine have certainly the power of freeing such patients from the periodical fits of marsh egg but those thus deceived into the belief that they are cured remain deceased in another way, frequently with an incurable quinine intoxication. So, in the marshy areas, the, in the modern um, science, they used to give the quinine derivative in order to remain free from the disease. They give the quinine sulfate or sometimes chloroquine phosphates, etc. The, those doses are always in large doses. Large means they are material doses. So if you are giving the chloroquine phosphate, the one gram stat dose is the dose. And it is too high. Many a times, patient, yes, patient will not going to suffer from the um, intermittent fever, attack of intermittent fever. But those patients always get suffered from the quinine complications. The reactions of the quinine, there are multiple reactions which happen. Severe gastritis is one important thing which happens because of quinine. There are some brain irritations which develop because of quinine. The diplopia is another complication. There are many more side effects which happen because of the quinine derivative and which definitely happens if you give large doses of quinine to the patient in order to prevent the intermittent fever. So, you should not give the synchona in larger doses, but it should be given in potentized form if you want to introduce. And last aphorism of the intermittent fever will finish today. In fact, it has been already finished, but it is just in between. That is the 245 aphorism is there, which is related with how homeopath should go ahead. So we'll just read that and tomorrow we'll continue with that. Aphorism 245. Having thus seen what attention should in the homeopathic treatment be paid to the chief varieties of diseases and to the peculiar circumstances connected with them, we now pass on to what we have to say respecting the remedies and the mode of employing them together with the regimen to be observed during their use. So up to the aphorism number 244 from 231, these are the aphorisms which are related with the intermittent diseases and their homeopathic management. We have covered each and every aspect describing homeopathic approaches towards each and every aspect by classifying them as Hanneman have classified over there. And we have discussed in, in length about all those intermittent varieties. Hereafter, right from aphorism number 245 onwards, he starts explaining about regimen as well as posology. The posology part which he has given explained very nicely in this part. The pharmacy comes hereafter and that we have to learn. And we must know exactly 
uh, how the potencies are there. So we have to understand all those concepts. So today we'll conclude over the here only and tomorrow we'll start with this posology part of organ of medicine. So thank you very much being there everyone and we'll meet again tomorrow. Uh, there are many people who are who have joined today's session. Yes, thanks a lot. If any queries are there, yes, definitely we'll have discussion. Otherwise, we'll continue. Yes. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, there is a, a patient uh, who comes repeatedly with a typical state of anxiety superstitious. And there is only one remedy you told us, that is Rustox. Should we give every time dose of Rustox or there is any different approach in such cases? Anxiety superstitious is not there. It is fear superstitious. Anxiety okay. and fear are two different things. Fear superstitious is the, if it is the state which is persistent in the patient. I will tell you one common example. One of my students who used to suffer again and again, wherever he is there, if some, something bad happens with, with his friends or anyone, he immediately starts feeling that that might happen to him also. And he used to call me immediately, Sir, uh, I don't know what If this state is persistent, this state is called as fear superstitious. It is a superstitious fear which has been developed in his mind. Yes. If it is persistent throughout the case, you must select the remedy. In Kent's repertory, there is only one remedy, that is Rustox. Recent version of the complete repertory, you gain Konayam also in that. But if that state should be applicable to the whole case, it is not only on one sentence you prescribe the Rustox. It should be a, specifically the whole case denotes the state, then it definitely works. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yes, Deepa, madam. Namaste, sir. So, Namaste. Uh, in this case, uh, there are also some other remedies that come to our mind. For example, uh, we may think of Ignatia or we may be thinking of opium or any other medicine. Uh, they just come to our mind. So, how do we rule out with uh, all those things. Superstitious is the thing which we have to understand first. Superstitious means what is it? Andhashraddha. Andhashraddha means what is it? That our mind logically only thinks about it. And we think that 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 This is a superstitious thought. But it is not only a thought in this patient. It is a state which is denoting the fear out of that. The fear arising out of that superstitious thought is the fear superstitious. It is not if patient shows the hysterical reaction to it, to the situation, then it might be Ignatia. If the patient's reaction to the situation is too extravagant, then it becomes opium. It varies. According to individual, it varies. Thus, these patients, fear superstitious patients comes to you and they ask you, doctor, check, please check my blood pressure, please check my heart. And then you ask why you are asking such, such a thing. Then they explain that one of my colleagues just died because of such and such thing. I must check myself because I'm, I'm, I'm having fear in my mind that I might suffer from sin. That is fear superstitious. If that situation is the same and patient reacts exaggerated and he falls down with hysterical reactions and he behaves like um, exactly the hysterical face, the eyes are turning up and that that is the hysteria out of the same situation it develops, then it becomes a Ignatia. If the patient just see that he, he has seen that and he becomes so, so Mm, prideful that mm, that remains over there and it is beyond control 
fear extravagance of then is it is single remedy opium is there so you have to understand exactly the state and that state defines exactly the differentiation between the remedy so you should not what happens generally we think ignatia it might be hysterical this is a allopathic thought we, we have to understand exactly whether it is a really hysteria whether it is really a fear superstitious whether it is really a fear extravagance if we understand the differentiation between them then it becomes quite easy to reach to the right remedy and that is what the answer to your question is there okay thank you sir okay so we'll conclude the today's session we'll meet tomorrow at the same time and one more thing i have told you again that tomorrow will be there will be a 9 o'clock lecture on the Mm, or a mid, but again there is a problem. Uh, it is now I have confirmed it definitely, and the template will be there. Saturday session at nine o'clock will be there on our own, not tomorrow. Okay, thanks a lot. Namaskar, sir.